One of the comments I get quite often is how professional my self-published books look. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can achieve that with your own self-published books too. Hello there, Space Cats. It is me, Jules, on the last day of 2021 with a video that I hope will help you get your children's books looking tip-top and ready to go out to print for bookshops or on Amazon or for libraries. Here are my recommendations for achieving something truly polished. The first thing to get right is the overall design of the cover. I started off by researching in great detail the common ideas and threads for my age range and genre. I mostly write for three to six year old fictional picture books. And as this is my main focus, I tend to buy a lot of books like that in that category. So what you need to do is decide where your book fits and then go and seek out books just like that to see what the trends are. If you're writing for young adult, then do lots of front covers have big graphic text on them with just a blank colour? Or if you're writing for middle grade, is there a particular style of illustration that's commonly used? A good tip is to use the whole cover and not just a boxed image with some text above it and below it. If you do something like this, then it's a sure sign to your readers that you are not really used to producing books. When you've got the cover right, don't forget the design of the inside pages. Whatever you decide, it needs to be consistent. If you have mostly text, then make sure the margins are the same throughout the book. And if you have page numbering, make sure it's in the same place and you don't miss any numbers out. And if you have chapter headings, make sure you use the same typeface all the way through. Whatever you decide to have on your front cover, make sure you get a good image, whether that's illustration, photography or a graphic. If you're making this yourself, make sure it is your best work. You can always tell, you get a feeling inside if you think, mm, maybe I could have done a little bit better. I often leave my projects alone for a few weeks and come back and have a look at them with fresh eyes because it's much easier to tell where you could tighten things up or do something a little bit differently. If you commission some art from a professional, make sure that you are tied into each step of the way, that they show you their ideas from the start and their drafts and roughs and then the start of the colouring process. That way, if it's something that you don't really like or it doesn't really fit, you can make alterations along the way or if it's something absolutely horrendous that you really hate, you can stop the work altogether and not have to pay for the whole thing although you will probably have to come to some sort of arrangement about paying something for what they have done. If you're using a photograph, then make sure it does what you want it to say. You can buy images off the internet from places like Pexels or Pixabay, but if they haven't got what you really want, then maybe try taking something yourself. A good tip here is to make sure you leave space for your title. And that means just really not having lots of details underneath where your text is going to go because it's just distracting for the eye. Choose your typeface carefully. Don't use something really naff. I recently had to use a typeface that I would never normally have used. It's the sort of thing that would be used on church newsletters or, or perhaps online for a school. But for a book, hmm, many people don't really use it. However, it was really important that I did use it because it's very easy for people with dementia to be able to read. And as they were my audience for that particular project, it was really, really important that I got that right. Do your research and see what other authors use. Remember, authors who are publishing through a publishing company have got a whole team behind them. They've got editors, proofreaders and designers. So make sure you use some of their knowledge and tap into what they might be thinking are trends for this year. Go into a bookshop and see what's new out. Are people using a lot of blocky sans serif or hand lettering or something a bit more wistful and arty? If you're using a print on demand company, then you might not get a massive choice of what paper you can use, but you should get some choice. So use the best quality. 
That often means the heaviest weight. You'll also get to choose glossy, matte and possibly eco. You might be using a print company, either a local one or something that you purchase online. Whichever, I would advise you to get a sample pack sent to you. That way you can feel what the paper actually feels like. Don't choose the lightest one, maybe something around the middle. And you're much more likely to get a wider choice than with print on demand. The printer that I use offers an eco version of a glossy paper that doesn't look cheap. The paper comes from a company that uses sustainable wood and is FSC certified. That's the Forest Stewardship Council, which ensures that the paper comes from well-managed forests. They also use vegetable-based inks and recycle all of the paper that they can't use. I commonly use 170 grams for the inner book and 275 grams for the cover, which is also laminated, making it look glossy. The paper inside and on the cover is one of the most important things to get right. Your reading customer will subconsciously notice this and not even realise that it's the detail that makes your book feel like it's traditionally published. I've used both print on demand companies and printer companies and I can definitely say I've had a better experience with print companies than with that print on demand just because of the choice that you have. Now to the story itself. Your spag should be spot on. What is spag? Well, spelling, punctuation and grammar. You do not want to have spelling errors in your text. Believe me, I have been there. It is both humiliating and embarrassing in equal measure and someone will definitely spot it and come and tell you all about it. Even if it's your first book, Please get it proofread and not by your Auntie Maud who's sitting by the fire and has a couple of hours spare. Get someone who knows what they're doing and has the attention to detail that would probably drive you or me completely round the bend. I made a video about why you should hire a proofreader here. Unless you are distributing your book among your friends and family, you will probably need an ISBN. That's an international standard book number. The barcode that you see on the back that has a number underneath it. If you have one of these, then you can sell online, in bookshops and supply libraries. Now, there is a very important piece of information that I need to give you here. If you are publishing on a print-on-demand service like KDP, that's Kindle Direct Publishing, who are part of Amazon, you will be asked if you want a free ISBN or whether you want to use your own. Currently in the UK at the end of 2021, one ISBN will cost you £89 or 10 will cost you 164 and in America it's 125 US dollars for one or 295 for 10. So you might be thinking, well, no brainer, right? I get a free one. Well, you need to look at the small print. If you get a free ISBN on KDP, then you can only sell on that platform. You can only sell on Amazon. You can't supply bookshops. You can't go on a different platform and supply them and you can't supply libraries. So. If this is your first book and you just want to get it out there and you only are going to be supplying Amazon for sale, then this would probably be a really good fit for you. If, however, you would like to distribute it more widely and be able to sell to bookshops, then you are going to need to buy your own ISBN. It may be less cost effective, but it will definitely be more professional. If you intend to produce more than one book, then I would definitely recommend you buy 10 ISBNs because that makes the overall cost of the book come down significantly. For example, in the UK, from £89 for producing one book to £16.40. One of the options when filling your details in for print on demand is to upload your manuscript as a MS Word doc. Now, this is fine if you've written a middle grade or a young adult novel and you've got lots of text. If, however, you have a picture book or an image heavy chapter book, then MS Software will not be the right software to use. 
I have found that it's hard to place images and if you have text on your page that it's just about impossible to place it properly. Admittedly, I do have a pretty old version of Word, maybe they've upgraded things since the one I bought. But I think MS Word was really designed for using text and not images. I use Photoshop to get my pages looking how I want to and then I save it as a PDF and bring it into InDesign to make myself a document with all of my pages on. And that's what I end up sending to my print on demand or my print company. However, that can be quite costly, so if you want an alternative, my friend uses something called Affinity, which he believes is a very cost-effective piece of software. I haven't used it myself, but he is a graphic designer, he's run his business for ages and he uses it, so I figured it must be at least pretty good. If all of this seems really overwhelming, please don't be put off. I didn't know any of this stuff before I started, and it took me months and months possibly years sometimes, to figure it out. I'm hoping that by giving you these tips, it might make it easier for you to make those decisions that you need to make when you're publishing your first book, and that it will help you make your books look really professional. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go. All that's left for me to do is to wish you a very happy new year. Next year I have a whole load more tutorials and advice videos if you want to make children's books. So make sure you subscribe and ding the bell for all of my uploads. Next week I am starting a series on illustrating fairy tales. So don't miss that. I'm off to jog some of that mince pie excess off. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.